Highgrange Park. So this is the next part of our story diary of a wimpy kid now so far in parts one two and three we've pretty much covered everything that happens to greg in september of the school year and this one starts at the start of october and the second month of his school year so based on that episode i don't think miss mcelroy had better make any big plans for now she's gonna spend her bonus october tuesday tonight dad walked up to me while i was sitting on the couch and he seemed bent out of shape about something. He wanted to know why I didn't take out the recycling bin this morning like he asked me to. I told him he must be confused because he never said anything to me about recycling. But he has asked me to do it last night while I was playing video games. And to be honest with you, that didn't seem a little familiar. If I did forget, it wasn't my fault. I actually have a great system for remembering things. You know how some people leave notes to themselves when they need to remember something? Well, I think that's a lot of work and it's a waste of paper too. So let's say I'm in bed and mum walks into my room and tells me I have to bring a permission slip to school in the morning. I don't get out of bed and write a note. I just throw, up, throw one of my pillows across the room. Then, when I wake up in the morning and go to walk out the door, I see the pillow and think, hey, what's this pillow doing here? Then I remember, oh yeah, I have to bring a permission slip to school. See what I mean? It's totally foolproof. Now that I think of it, I did leave myself a reminder to take out the recycling. I specifically remember putting my socks on the TV before I went to bed to remind myself in the morning. And if Dad did something to mess up my system, he's only got himself to blame. But Dad wouldn't let it go. He said, now that I'm getting older, I need to be start being more responsible. I've heard of this sort of thing from Dad before. The last few weeks of summer, our neighbour, Mrs Grove, hired me to take care of her plants while, I was, while she was on a business trip. Well, I did it for the first few days, and then I guess you could say I got busy with other things. When Dad asked me how the plants were doing, I realised I hadn't been over there in at least a week. I went to grab Mrs Grove's key so I could water her plants, but the key wasn't in its usual spot. I practically turned the house upside down looking for that key, but I couldn't find it. It turns out the reason I couldn't find the key because it wasn't in our house. I left it at Mrs Grove's and she found it when she got back from her trip. Mrs Grove was pretty mad that her key was in the front door, but the way I see it, she should have been happy nobody robbed her house. She was mad about her plants too because unfortunately most of them didn't make it. I suggested that maybe she should buy a cactus or another plant that does not need a lot of water to survive. That way, everything would be fine. If I lost her key the next time she went on a business trip. But Mrs Grove said she wouldn't hire me again, even if her life depended on it. Then she sent me home without paying, which stinks, because I really did spend a lot of time looking for that key. Anyway, I think that episode is still fresh in Dad's mind. And that's why I'm hearing this responsibility thing again. Hopefully, Dad will leave my socks on the television next time around and things won't get to this point. Thursday. Well, Dad is really serious about taking on more responsibility and the first thing he wants me to do is start waking myself up in the morning. That's actually a real problem because I depend on him to wake me up. Hop, hop, let's go, let's go. Clap, clap, clap. That's the way we've do been doing it for years and I really don't see any reason why things should change now. Dad said that if I don't learn to wake myself up with an alarm clock, then I'm not going to go know how to do it when I go off to college. But I always figured that I would, that we, the way me and Dad would stay in touch. Hello. Yesterday was the first day I tried to wake myself up and it didn't work out so well. My alarm went off and all, but the sound just worked its way into my dream. 
and today didn't go any better. I set my alarm to radio and it tuned in to classical musical station because I didn't want to hear that annoying beep first thing in the morning, but the music didn't wake me up either. The problem is, without an actual human being waking me up, my brain is always going to find some excuse to keep sleeping. But I think I might have figured out a solution to this alarm clock situation. I found one of those old style wind up clocks in the storage room today, and these clocks make a huge racket when they go off. I've tested it out to see if it still worked, and sure enough, it did. Ring! I don't think anyone could sleep through a noise like that. The only problem is that the clock doesn't have a snooze bar, so I'm worried I'll shut it off and I'll fall back to sleep. So tonight I hid the clock under my bed. This way, when the alarm clock goes off, I'll have to get up to find the clock and then I'll be up for the day. Friday. It turns out the new alarm clock caused some problems. With the wind-up clock ticking under my bed, I felt like I was sleeping on top of a bomb that was going to go off, so the stress kept me awake half the night. I sleepwalked through my day at school, which was fine until we had an assembly. We were lined up to go into the auditorium, and I was leaning against the wall. But I must have fallen asleep for half a second because my hand zipped, and I accidentally set off the fire alarm. The whole school had to evacuate and three minutes later there were a bunch of fire trucks out the front. After they found out there was no fire, they let everyone back into the school. The principal got on the loudspeaker and said that whoever set off the alarm was going to be suspended and they should turn themselves in. I don't know much, but I do know is that you shouldn't announce what the punishment is going to be before you ask people to turn themselves in. So I decided I would be smart to keep quiet and let this all blow over. After the third period, a rumour started going around the school that the fire alarm squirts out invisible liquid when you pull the handle and that the teachers had some special x-ray one they could use to see the liquid on somebody's hand. So it was only a matter of time before they found the culprit. Then everyone started wondering if it was the teachers who started the rumour and it was just a trick to see which kid would go to the bathroom first to wash his hands. So that really got everyone paranoid. Then nobody would go to the bathroom and everyone who actually needed to go decided to just hold it until the end of the day. The principal eventually had to shut the school down early because nobody was washing their hands and we were right in the middle of flu season. Mum was off at the library studying, so I had to call Dad at work and ask him to come and pick me up from school early and he didn't seem too happy about it. But if he hadn't made me wake myself up, none of this would have ever happened. Wednesday. They're starting a new unit in health class called the Facts of Life and apparently it covers all the stuff they've been dancing around the past couple of months. They've sent permission slips home and if you don't get yours signed you're not allowed to even be in the classroom for the rest of the semester. I don't really like this permission slip thing. Mum only lets me watch G-rated movies so I know there's no way she'll let me in this class. To get around that problem I typed up a fake note and taped it on top of the actual permission. I give my permission for my child to do extra homework. Luckily, mum didn't look at the paper too closely and I got the signature I needed. Now that was an easy decision. I'm actually glad they're going to the facts of life unit because I have a lot of questions about this stuff. I don't have a reliable way of getting any answers. Just about everything I know in this department comes from Albert Sandy. I'm starting to wonder if he's been feeding me bad information. But last week he told everyone at lunch table that it's medically impossible for a girl to fart. Well, I know that's not true because of the time mum hu hugged Aunt Dorothy on Christmas Eve. Anyway, today was the first part day of Facts of Life unit and sure enough nurse Powell sent the kids whose parents wouldn't sign their permission slips down the library to have special helpers for the day. The rest of us were pretty excited because we couldn't wait to hear all the juicy stuff nurse Powell was about to tell us but it didn't go the way I expected at all. Nurse Powell 
put some charts up on the easel and started talking about zygotes and chromosomes and a whole bunch of other scientific nonsense. I kept waiting for her to tell us this was all a big joke and get to the good stuff, but it never happened. So I'm guessing the school is just trying to confuse us to make us lose interest. Anyway, if the school is trying to confuse us, they're doing a pretty good job. At lunch, we tried to explain what we learned in the Facts of Life unit to the kids who didn't get their permission slips signed, and we couldn't agree on a single thing. Okay, let's stop there. Look forward to part five next.